Hi there, this is the, it's the name of the channel. Should I stop introducing myself at the beginning of these videos? Um, uh, yeah, what was I saying? So I am slowly getting back to some very light creative work and uh, whatever I do these days, I try to set myself up for success. And um, I think this is a very useful tip for anyone that's just starting out because you know you want to have more success and less reasons to discourage yourself so whatever I'm doing these days it has to be simple it has to be cheap I don't want to beat myself up for wasting money on something that doesn't work in the end and I um, also want it to be fun and ridiculous and stupid and also wearable and um, this one I really wanted to wear around some friends because they nicknamed me Patrick Star for whatever reason <laughs> um, so yeah I know not very relatable I suppose who wants to make lime green shorts with purple flowers but I know stay with me because I based the shape of these shorts on these very expensive how much was it 1100 euro mew mew shorts yes so um not even high-end brands are reinventing the wheel so you know i think it's very useful to know the basics so let's begin so first i thought i'd make a, a short version of these pajama pants i dropped back in the day but what happened in the meantime is that I got used to this lifestyle, uh, the track pants lifestyle with the very generous elastic waistband. And uh, I also think my ass got chunkier, I hope. Bottom line is um, this first one did not work. It was just weird. I messed up the length. The front looked pretty bad and the back is trying to give me a wedgie. Um, so yeah, this is the first design lesson on not reinventing the wheel. If you know you like a certain fit of a certain piece, copy it. So for the, these shorts, I knew that I wanted the crotch to be this deep, plus much more room for my butt. And uh, finally, I want it to be much shorter. Just go mew mew with it. And I didn't record myself taking measurements to decide the length, but uh, you'll get the free PDF pattern. So if you're in doubt, just cut yours a few inches long, uh, centimeters. And um, nobody has any lime green fabric laying around the house, except I kind of did because I have this bed sheet that was really ugly. I tried to do some tie dye using bleach and I didn't like it for a while, but eventually I just got fed up with it and decided to upcycle it to make these shorts. So, you know, we're talking about keeping it cheap. I think most people will have some old bed sheets, tablecloths, I don't know, something lying around the house or you can just buy the cheapest white cotton poplin. Just lie and say it's from Marta Margiela's second collection when he was super broke. Um, but will it look and feel luxurious up close? Absolutely not! Like see how this fabric looks next to actual good shirting fabric? But again, we're just having fun here. And, uh, you know, good thing I didn't waste good fabric on those first shorts that I ended up tossing. Um, yeah, you, you're going to be tossing a lot of your projects, to be honest. And I know it sounds wasteful. It's um, definitely not sustainable, but just be sure that you're nowhere near fast fashion and or even high fashion brands there are many brands that literally burn unsold stock and then for the 
applique flowers. I bought this lilac fabric with this very subtle crinkled texture. It's probably a 100% polyester or a polyviscose blend. It's not a good fabric. Look, it's already forming those um, lint balls. And um, I decided to make this video after finishing my shorts. So this is me making one for a friend. And I thought mine were still not roomy enough. So this is how you can add more volume without having to make a, a whole new pattern. I started to draw the front and then I marked it half halfway through the pattern and added 1.5, drew a little bit more, more or less until the middle of uh, the center of the patterns, added 1.5 and did the same thing with the back. Once I did that, so I measured the, the waists. Uh, and this, so this, is, this was about 62.7 and that's times two. So you make a, a very long rectangle for the waistband and the elastic will be your waist size, maximum your waist size plus one. And uh, by the way, I'm using here a, a, a pretty skinny elastic because I wanted to follow Patrick's shorts. And uh, yeah, also thin elastics are much cheaper than the wide ones. And once I had everything ready, the first thing that I did was um, sew the fronts and the back crotch. And I'm doing front seams. So you, you first you stitch uh, from the outside. And some people like to trim the fabric. I prefer to just to do a very skinny seam. So I did like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Press the seams open. This is a trick that I learned at Bunka. And then also from Bunka, I have this, um, this ironing thing for this, to press sleeves. And uh, like if you have that, that really helps for a lot of things. If you don't, that's still possible to, to do it. You just have to be a little bit more careful. And um, yeah, I like to press these seams open because then it's easier to, to fold and have a very clean front seam. And you can see here the, I think you can see like the, the reflection, not a reflection. You can kind of see through the fabric and see more or less where you have to do the top stitching to finish the, the front seam. Usually for trousers, you would do the crotch seam last thing, but I needed to, I wanted to have it like this because it would be easier to, to do the, the flower appliques. These flowers have a, a very weird shape. In order to, to fold the, the seams in this very curvy pattern, I did this large stitch around well, around the curved areas, then you can just pull the, the threads together very lightly and then press. And for these things, like a templates and thick paper can help. In this case, it didn't. And also this fabric wasn't great for this. Actually, any fabric, any crepe-like fabric will be really hard to work with. And I also didn't you know, use any fusing because this was supposed to be a quick and cheap project. And uh, yeah, just use an abundance of pins if you want. Uh, and also doing a, a temporary hand stitch after pressing, it also helps a lot. So um, yeah, you know your, your level, like how comfortable you are working with a, with a sewing machine and sewing like Kind of tricky things so it's better to do it slow and do it right than rush through it make some mistakes and then having to unpick the seams unpicking is really annoying how to make the waistband so i cut it in two parts so here i've already stitched the center front and the center back 
but I'm gonna add more markings here to say like what where is the the middle so that's more or less the the side of the shorts and uh, you you also have these markings on the the actual shorts and um, this waistband since my elastic is 1.2 plus one centimeter seam allowance I cut it to like five centimeters width what I like to do is first I stitch the, the center back so the elastic is secured and uh, oh and here like it's it's just a stay stitch uh, to encase the elastic inside the waistband so it's a 0.7 and uh, here are my elastic I marked where the center front is supposed to be so I until I reach there I'm just stretching and the elastic and kind of pulling it so uh, you can see that the green fabric is getting all gathered but the important thing is that you can match the center front like the center where I have the pin to the center front seam and you stop and you secure it and then you can keep sewing and once you finish it you can just stretch it and uh, kind of distribute all the gathering and uh, now you can see like since you added those those notches those little markings you can match it's going to be easier to to find where to to attach the waistband to the rest of the shorts and these shorts were quite big so maybe in this case like if you want to maybe you want to add a few more markings yeah you can see here that um, I'm having to stretch quite a long bit so you know um, if you need to pin everything before you start sewing that that could be useful as well and uh, yeah so I did the waistband the legs are still open so I prefer to do it this way because it makes it easier to fold the hem I also have to trim a little bit here the, um, the purple flower and the trick that you can use is to if you have to fold the hem for example for two centimeters you just mark four centimeters on your fabric and then you fold it to meet your marking but in my in this case I think like I just need to fold 0.5 and then I'm gonna fold 0.5 again and it's pretty easy to kind of like eyeball um, half centimeters I just fold it once because this fabric is pretty simple to just finish folding on the sewing machine and uh, yeah you can just fold it as you are sewing and here yeah you can see if you're making something a little bit more high-end um, you shouldn't do this like you can see like my my thread broke in the middle of the of the top stitching so in this case it would have been pretty easy to just like remove everything but again this is like this is pretty cheap stuff so I'm just gonna continue from, uh, from where it stopped and uh, yeah I'm gonna stop sewing here because I want to do the the flowers with purple stitching and then I just need to finish and um, yeah, once I do that, I'm also going to do a front seam on the, on the inseam. And uh, yeah, with the front seam, you will kind of have these seams kind of floating in uh, between the legs. So I'm just going to do a, a, like some top stitching on it. Just to make sure they're not kind of like flapping it's not super important uh, yeah it's done my god I made these ones way too big and the waistband is also like I used a different technique for this one 
Um, if I'm super lazy, I can just go and fold, like make some sort of like teats on it and pretend it's part of the style, it was all part of the plan. Or you can just like open the, the center front and the center back seams and pull the elastic a little bit and trim it and also like stitch them so it doesn't like they're not loose in there and yeah then you sew the the center front and the center back of the waistband all over again i didn't record myself finishing the waistband on the overlocker and if you don't have an overlocker you can use the zigzag machine just be careful because anything that has a lot of volume and a lot of gathering it's easy to kind of get all like smushed together so just make sure to give it a little stretch as you're sewing and, um, yeah, hope you like this video and if you want to try making these shorts i'll leave the patterns on my website and i have a new one since i just want to keep a blog for now and honestly i think it's now looking much cleaner it's a lot easier to use it's as a, a resource space for you guys and as you saw at the beginning the this pattern is really easy to customize if you want to make it bigger or maybe a little bit smaller and uh, if, in case you want to use it for trousers instead you just need to add to the length and you can also make a wider waistband or think of these like smart little details if you want to make it look more designed so good luck and i'll see you in the next video bye okay and this is lisa's version how do you feel with these shorts Fabulous. My dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That makes me very happy as a creator. Yes. Lots so, of <laughs> lots of room. Yes. Yeah. Lots of room for a food baby. Always. <laughs>